Hey, it's Matt, your Average Gamer, and we're on New Game Plus 7. As usual on this character, we're going to be doing a build for Phantom Slash. It's going to be a really fun one. This is a really fun Ash of War to use. I'm going to explain the benefits, downsides, everything about it, everything you need to know. Let's get into the details. So first things first, for Phantom Slash, you pick up the Ash of War in the Forbidden Lands. You have to fight the Knight Rider that's there. You can actually cheese him if you're having difficulty with him. The area is kind of small, and you can easily fall off. If you go over to the platform in front of him, though, you can use Rot or anything else to beat him from there, and you can basically cheese him to get the Ash of War very easily, and you'll have the Ash of War Phantom Slash. Now, Phantom Slash is actually a very interesting Ash of War because it has two attack patterns to it that you can use if you hit it twice, and you can actually go, I'm going to show you later on, in a different direction the Phantom goes in, and if you're using something like Blood Flame Blade, the Phantom can get bleed build up as well. So I started by testing on the two dragons that are in Kaled, and it was really fun to use this Ash of War. This is definitely one of the ones that's more enjoyable because it's just interesting to use, and we went more for a strength setup with the Knight Rider's Glaive, and we're able to pump a lot of points into strength and get good damage out of the Ash of War. We also went for the Heavy Affinity. If you're looking more for a Dex variant on this, by the way, it's been suggested and also told to me on Discord. By the way, be sure to join the Discord. There's a ton of people in now, the links below, that the Cross Naginata is also, if I said that right, very good for this too because of the innate bleed on it in Blood Flame. You're able to get a little bit more bleed build up as opposed to this, which obviously doesn't have the innate bleed, but I wanted to go for a strength build for this one and mix it up. So one downside I want to note, by the way, real quick before we move forward, is the animation when you're done with the Ash of War, being able to roll out of it is a little bit on the long side. You're going to see me get hit a fair amount because of that, and that's one thing I'd like to see them fix with this. This would be a really powerful Ash of War, maybe even top tier, if it was a little bit easier to roll out of afterwards, because once you're in it, being able to roll after, you're going to get hit. You may even trade a lot with this type of build, given the fact that it's very difficult to dodge right after using the Ash of War. And as far as the Ash of War itself goes, it is powerful and hard hitting, especially since we're heavily invested in strength. We're using a couple of buffs and we're able to get decent damage on it. We're going to take a couple of bosses on here in a short bit, and we're going to show off the damage in general, which really is quite good on this Ash of War, especially with the Knight Rider's Glaive. And again, it's really enjoyable because of the fact that you have that phantom hit and then your hit, and you're able to combo it two times on the Ash of War, where you initially run straight through for the initial hit and then a slam down that the phantom will do as well as far as mobs go this is something that really excels because you have that initial hit and it has a really wide range as far as where it can hit and then the phantom obviously is going to hit first then you're going to slam down and if you combo it pretty much on any mob in the game it'll absolutely destroy them it's very very good against individual enemies and let's show off the damage by putting the godskin noble here to sleep and then seeing how much damage we can get with a couple of buffs and seeing how hard we can hit him with the ash of war phantom slash and as you're going to see here, it is considerable damage. Again, this is a really fun and good Ash of War. The main concern that I have with it is the rolling animation. Being able to dodge out of the Ash of War is a little bit troublesome. But aside from that, it is something that hits really hard, especially going in as a strength build. And don't mind my poor dodging there. Don't worry, he gets stuck in a corner. And then we're going to put him back to sleep and finish off the Godskin Noble here. But in the meantime, I just wanted to mention, if you're not sub, by the way, definitely sub to this channel if you love overpowered PvE builds. And the Discord, by the way, has been growing like crazy. There's over 300 people there. Definitely be sure to join that as well. By the way, any affinity you use, I'm not sure there's a lot of poison builds out there given the fact that poison still needs a buff, but no matter what you use, whether it's poison, frost, which is obviously good, bleed, which is great, you're able to get that both on the phantom hit and then the hit yourself as well. And again, this is something that you're just going to have to trade with every once in a while as far as the Ash War goes, I think for most of the people playing it, given the fact that, like I mentioned earlier, the dodge window outside of the Ash of War, it is hard hitting though. It's something that can do a lot of damage to a lot of the bosses in the game, and I was impressed with the damage in general, and the fact that obviously the status effects follow up with the Phantom as well. Notice, by the way, I switched my armor set. It's not a bad armor set. I'm using the Knight Rider set. And then as far as the Knight Rider's Glaive goes, it matches basically everything that the Phantom does. So he has the same armor set, the same weapon on us, and basically, more or less, the same Ash of War. It's basically a copy of myself in the end, which makes it really entertaining. You use the Knight Rider set and obviously the weapon as well. It's really cool to just have an exact copy of yourself and just kind of go with the whole Knight Rider theme. It's just fun to do. 
And this was something that's really cool as far as the setup goes. I'm going to show you everything, build stats, equipment, everything you need to know in short order here after we go through one more boss and show on like mass mobs how well it does. It is something that, again, you're going to have a little bit of trading with when it comes to this Ashen Warren build, but you're able to get a lot of damage out of it. Blood Flame Blade goes nicely with it, and it does very, very good damage on the majority of bosses that I tested it on. Keep in mind too, when you're using this, if you pick a weapon that has innate bleed on it, you can get even more bleed out of it. You can also go for the blood affinity, but you will sacrifice some damage. For me, I just wanted to go the route of having a strength build. I wanted to turn this into a strength build and make it as hard hitting as I possibly can without doing too, too many buffs, just basic buffs and whatnot, but a very, very good setup that hits substantially hard as far as the bosses go and does bleed as a little bit of a bonus with blood flame blade just to give it a little extra fire damage a little extra bleed i think blood flame blade is around 60 bleed and then you have that fire damage too which isn't a crazy amount but it does add to the damage in general and it's something that you should definitely add if you really like this ash of war because of the fact that the phantom's able to use it too and as we were able to show it off on mobs here, you're going to see it absolutely destroys them. I really like the fact that you can be at a pretty good distance and then the phantom obviously will follow up with that hit too. And you're able to just get a lot of damage. This is something that can absolutely destroy mobs. And really, as far as scaling these Ashes of War on how good they are, this is one of the ones where it's quite good. I just hope that in a future patch, they eventually fix the dodging animation out of the Ash of War, and then it would probably make this even top tier if we're able to dodge a little bit better after the Ash of War, because that animation in between is just a little bit too much before we can dodge. Let's get into equipment. For this, we have the Knight Rider's Glaive, preferably plus 25 with Phantom Slash on it. Any seal will do. We have the Knight Rider set, Dragon Crest, Great Shield, Talisman. Shard of Alexander, Ritual Swords Talisman. We have Lord of Bloods. If you do get bleed, it gives you extra damage. However, you could switch that out if you're mixing things in the fight with the Axe Talisman as well too. And then we have the Faith tier for buffs. And then we have the Defense tier too because you're going to be trading a lot of hits with this one. So that's a really good idea to have that. And Dragon Crest, let's get into stats. For stats, we went heavily into strength because we went for the heavy affinity. And because we wanted to hit hard and turn this kind of into a strength build, where bleed is just there as a little bit of a bonus. As far as vigor, I would recommend a minimum of 50, maybe even 60 vigor, because again, you're going to be trading hits often with this. Overall, I was really happy with the stats and setup that we have here, especially for the heavy affinity, just making use of how much damage and how hard we can hit with the Knight Rider's Glaive. Let's get into buffs. So for buffs, what we use here is first the tier, which obviously we're drinking the faith tier so that we can do buffs. Then we're using golden Val. Blessing boon is a really good idea with the fact that you could be trading hits. And then last but not least, flame grant me strength is a good addition. And then we get to use that really cool Ash of War, which I'm going to describe here a little bit more in a second after using Blood Flame Blade. So as far as the Ash of War goes, that's how it's regularly used. But there is a couple things to talk about in terms of what you can do with this Ash of War. So interestingly enough, if you need to, whether it's for PvP or PvE, you can actually go straight and follow the Phantom. But you have the choice to, if you want to, you can go in a different direction than the Phantom entirely if that benefits you in some way. Or if it stops you from getting hit and sends the Phantom phantom there you don't always have to go in the direction the phantom goes in so that's good to know too when you're using the ash of war phantom slash all right a really fun build by the way on the discord we're doing challenges this week's winner were marital joke and youngling slayer i guess it's a star wars reference but those two guys ended up winning this week they're champion of the discord and they also got the shout out for this video this week's challenge by the way is to cosplay as a character and beat any boss that's for the challenge on Discord, and they also obviously are champion of the Discord for the week as well. We've been doing these challenges the third week, and it's been a lot of fun. So be sure to join the Discord, and if you're not sub and you love overpowered PvE builds, be sure to check out all the awesome builds that are on the channel. Thanks for watching, and as always, I will catch you guys there.